Welcome back, Jayhawks fans, to Over 50. What a game we just witnessed. Kansas beating Kansas State on the road in the Octagon of Doom, 78-75. Analysis to come here in just a second because there are some stats that just don't add up, but the most important stat is the score, and that's what added up for Kansas, and Kansas gets another win, and Kansas State remains cellar dwellers in the Big 12. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button, like the video, share this video with your friends, comment down below, and let's go ahead and break this down. Kansas just played a horrible first half. They were down 16 at the half. Nigel Pack was just – every three he put up went in. I mean, you can see right here, 8 of 12, 3 for 3 from the free throw line, 35 points. I mean, you can't ask somebody to play a better game than he did. And if you look at these stats a little bit closer – Kansas State shoots 46% from the floor, 38.5% from three-point range, compared to Kansas that shot only 44% from the floor, 28, 23, 24% from three-point range if you round it up. Sure, Kansas shot a little bit better from the free throw line, but I think most fans and most coaches, if you knew that you were going to shoot better from the floor than your opponent and 15%, better from three-point range, you take those stats, you'd be like, yeah, we're going to win this game. That just shows you why games aren't played on paper. Coach Self said in a previous interview that the most important game are the last four minutes because the other parts of the game, you know, there's always minutes later that you have an opportunity to make up for mistakes. But those last four minutes, there are no there's no opportunity to make up for mistakes. And Kansas just played better down the stretch. Kansas State's big guy fouled out. David McCormick was able to make plays, and I'd like to just focus in on that guy because I've been on him quite a bit. And, you know, he probably doesn't see any of my content, but, you know, if he does or if someone, you know, knows him, I'd just like to give a shout out to him. This is the man that we need. 15 rebounds, 11 points, solid double-double, and he hit three of his four free throws, which is a lot better than – Ochai Abaji, but I'm not going to bash on Abaji. I mean, it was just, you know, you just, I just have a thing with free throws. I mean, <laughs> you should be able to hit the shot when nobody can guard you. Nobody can block it. You have nothing to worry about. You're just shooting, you know, but I mean, of course, you know, the pressure, all those people, I'm sure it's difficult. So, but it was just good to see David McCormick play a great game. And Abaji, if he's not a national player of the year finalist, at the end of the year, provided, you know, he doesn't get injured or something like that, then there's something seriously wrong with how the NCAA does these awards because, I mean, he is easily the best player, I think, in the Big 12, the best shooter, somebody that you, even if you contest his shots, he still makes them. And he poured in 29 today, so obviously that wrist isn't hurting him. It was great to see Remy Martin back in the game. Um, he, he didn't do a whole lot, but – Remy Martin in the stat, call, the stat line doesn't need to actually have a lot of numbers, you know, to be important or to be valuable because you have to respect. I mean, you have all of, you have his previous previous history at Arizona State where he was the man and you know was, you know, first team you know player you know in the Pac-12. I mean, he was Arizona State, so you know what he can do. So you have to respect that. I mean, so even if he's just in decoy mode and he's just drawing a lot of attention, that helps too. Um, Jalen Wilson, it's great to have that guy back. He had another double-double, 10 rebounds, 16 points. Uh, Christian Brown, kind of an off night, five assists. That's good, 11 points. But um, one from five from three-point range. But he did have one three that was solid because Kansas State, was trying to push that lead back up. They hit a three, and then Kansas came right back down, and, and Brown drills a three, and it just shuts the crowd up, which was great. But that's about all I have for you guys. I mean, it was an amazing game. If you missed it, hopefully you can catch a rerun of it or a replay of it somewhere. Um, I guess they don't call them reruns. But um, I got through this video, and I said David McCormick's name correctly. So um, let's just give some props to the Jayhawks. Um, you know, it's, uh, Bill Self's just got to be going through so many different emotions emotions right now because this game, you know, it, it's a high, but yet, you know, he lost his father Thursday night. 
And don't get me started about Abaji being fouled on a three-point play. He was clearly six inches behind the line, but yet the officials only let him shoot two free throws. You've got replay. You can go back and look. I mean, I just, I, I don't understand it. I would love to get some information on that. And if I do get some information on that, I'll bring it to you. But next up for the Jayhawks, Texas Tech comes to town, followed by the Big 12 SEC Challenge when they'll play Kentucky. So two top 20 teams, uh, well, <laughs> four top 20 teams, if you if you want to look out and project it, because then they have to go to Iowa State, the number five Baylor comes to Kansas, and then they're off to play Texas. So um, a really tough stretch coming up for the Jayhawks, but um, that's all I got for you guys. Again, if you're new, please hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button, share this video with your friends out there, comment down below. And until next time, uh, Rock Chalk Jayhawk, later. <laughs>